Hi everyone, I'm Louise Boothby and for those of you that don't know me, I'm an investment partner at Collar Capital based in our London office. I'd like to first thank you all for joining us today for our Barometer webinar. And on behalf of myself and the firm, I hope that you and your family are all keeping safe as we navigate these relatively unprecedented times. I'm joined today by my colleague, Ed Goldstein, who's a partner in our New York office, and together we will walk you through the findings of our latest private equity barometer. So you will have the opportunity to ask questions. You can do this by using the ask a question button, and we will follow up with you directly after the session. So for those of you who are new to our publication, Collar Capital's Global Private Equity Barometer is a unique snapshot of worldwide trends in private equity. It's a twice yearly overview of the opinions and intentions of private equity investors based in North America, Europe, including the Middle East and Asia Pacific. This edition of the barometer captured the views of 113 private equity investors from around the world and they were surveyed between the 14th of September and the 16th of October 2020. Its findings are globally representative of the LP population by location, type of organisation, total AUM and length of private equity investment experience. Investors answered these questions six months after COVID-19 became a global crisis and the results really do reflect that from how LPs see the future of communication to how they're adapting their approach to portfolio construction and which strategies within the private equity market they believe offer attractive investment opportunities. So with that, let's turn to the findings. In last summer's barometer, we reported a big leap in LP satisfaction with respect to the transparency of their GP's disclosures and communications. The COVID-19 crisis has been a huge test of this, with effective communication between investors and their managers being of paramount importance. As you can see from these headlines, proving clear and regular communication is key in building investor support. Despite the suddenness of the pandemic's onset, nearly all LPs declare themselves satisfied with how their GPs have communicated which is a stark contrast to the global financial crisis, after which 60% of investors told us that they were dissatisfied with communication. The shift we've seen this year towards virtual communication looks like it might be here to stay. Investors think that virtual AGMs, which sprang up everywhere in the spring, will remain a permanent feature of the landscape but that they will probably become a complement to rather than a replacement for face-to-face -face meetings. Virtual AGMs are one reason why LPs don't expect private equity travel to return to pre-COVID levels, with over four-fifths of LPs saying PE-related travel will be reduced permanently as a result of the pandemic. As you can see from this chart, almost all companies cancelled their business travel in 2020. And with a continued shift to a virtual world, restrictions on business travel are likely to remain into the future. Two thirds of LPs believe that one legacy of COVID-19 will be PE investors starting to take more account of structural risks. With factors such as pandemics, climate change and geopolitics, playing a more important role in asset allocation and portfolio construction decisions. However, despite uncertainty around the pandemic's ultimate effects, limited partners overwhelmingly believe that the current private equity investment opportunities for GPs outweigh the risks. Just one in 10 LPs think managers should pause or slow down their investment pace until the COVID-19 crisis has been resolved and they see all areas of the world as ripe for investment, especially North America, which almost all investors say is currently attractive or very attractive for investment. Interestingly, the crisis has done little to dampen LPs' expectations for returns from their PE portfolios, with over four fifths of LPs expecting to achieve annual net returns of more than 11% over the next three to five years. 
Another area of focus for LPs following changes in the investment environment is their co-investment policy. For many years, the barometer has reported a growth in the number of LPs making co-investments alongside their managers. However, now, many investors are saying that they're likely to rethink co-investments, with over 40% of LPs saying changes in the investment environment, such as lower levels of transaction during the crisis, distressed portfolios, and reduced distributions, mean that they will reassess their policy. So speaking of reduced distributions, the COVID crisis has led some investors to suffer, suffer liquidity shortfalls, and we asked LPs how they plan to plug any gaps. Almost a third of limited partners would new, use new credit facilities or asset disposals to remedy any liquidity shortfalls in their PE portfolio over the next couple of years. However, whilst European and Asia Pacific LPs are almost agnostic between either of these options, North American investors are twice as likely to choose asset disposals over a new credit facility. In addition, over half of private equity investors expect to access the secondary market within the next two years, either as a buyer or a seller or both. Despite secondary market taking a pause at the start of the COVID crisis, transactions have picked up pace since the summer, and we expect volume to continue to rebound going into 2021. Alongside improving liquidity, investors' main motivations for selling in the secondary market will be to refocus their resources on their best performing managers and to rebalance their portfolios for a post-COVID world. These priorities are broadly similar to those shown by investors at the time of the GFC. GP-led secondaries have grown rapidly in terms of transaction volume in recent years and now account for around one third of secondary market volume. Despite modest volumes in the first half of 2020 due to COVID, we've since seen activity rebound vigorously in GP-leds. And GP-leds are likely to continue to play an important role in providing liquidity to investors in the future, as a large majority of PE investors welcome well-constructed GP-led secondary transactions, believing that they increase optionality in an illiquid asset class for both LPs and GPs. I'll now hand over to Ed to present the rest of the findings. Thank you, Louise. For the next few slides, I'll comment on a couple of trends related to the public markets. First, I will note that over the last few years, the number of companies being taken private has been elevated. Three quarters of LPs believe the number of take privates of public companies by private equity firms will rise over the next two years, with investors from all regions of the world sharing this view. At the same time, special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs for short, which provide instant access to the public markets for private companies, have seen a rapid growth in the number and volume being raised. The number of SPACs being registered in the U.S. nearly doubled from 2019 to 2020, for instance. And the aggregate capital raised by SPACs stood at $40 billion as of September this year. But while SPACs are seen as a useful alternative to IPOs by some market commentators, with the Financial Times reporting that SPACs have grown from a niche part of equity markets to become a popular alternative route to public markets, for example, the attractions of SPACs as an investment strategy are less obvious to LPs. A large majority of LPs have not recently invested in a SPAC and have no intention of doing so in the future. One reason is that over 70% of LPs think that private equity offers a better risk return profile than SPACs. Another is that two thirds of LPs believe that SPACs will prove to be a temporary cyclical phenomenon rather than remain as an important feature of the investment landscape. Investor enthusiasm for private equity and alternative assets remains strong overall, although some changes in asset allocation and investment strategy are inevitable in the wake of the pandemic. For example, LP appetite for real estate has dipped significantly since the coronavirus struck. At this time last year, a net balance of a quarter of LPs were planning to boost their target allocations to real estate. Today, the proportion of investors planning a lower asset allocation to real estate almost equals those planning an increase. 
Increased attention to individual industry sectors is also on the cards. Almost half of LPs say they will increase the sector focus of their private equity portfolios. However, their approach to different sectors will vary. Investors will prefer buyout funds to venture growth funds in boosting exposure to online retail, telecommunication services, and online media and entertainment. By contrast, almost four times as many investors plan to boost exposure to biotech and drug discovery via venture and growth strategies than via buyout strategies. Next, we turn to private debt. The amount of private debt assets under management has grown rapidly in recent years, and frequent forecasts it will reach nearly $1.5 trillion by 2025. While direct lending has the larger share of AUM, distressed debt also has over $200 billion in assets under management. And this is likely to increase as, unsurprisingly, LP's appetite for turnaround and distress strategies has grown, with almost a third of investors planning to increase their exposure to these strategies in the next few years, compared with one in five LPs in the barometer of winter 2018-19. And investors have a very positive view on the outlook for returns of distress strategies, with roughly seven out of 10 LPs expecting to achieve annual net returns of more than 11%, for the current vintage of distressed debt funds. Although one might wonder if these expectations may have been lowered somewhat since investors answered the survey back in September to October, with the positive developments in producing vaccines to combat COVID-19, bringing a bit of light to the end of the tunnel for sectors that have been most heavily impacted. Investors remain sanguine about private debt funds overall, seeing higher default rates because of the pandemic as a largely manageable problem. Only 10% of LPs believe higher defaults will be a major problem for North American debt funds, though this figure rises to 22% of investors in the case of Asia-Pacific debt funds. We changed tack for our last finding from the winter barometer with a focus on ethnic diversity. Although diversity in the private equity industry has been discussed for some time, ethnic diversity had until recently received less attention than gender diversity. Investors believe, however, that the industry's recent focus on ethnic diversity is likely to bear fruit, with almost two-thirds of LPs saying that today's increased focus on the issue will lead to faster change on the ground. That concludes our findings. To summarize, in this barometer, investors are telling us they are satisfied with how their GPs are communicating, they plan to recognize structural risks in portfolio construction, They believe that well-structured GP-led secondaries are a useful tool for private equity, and they expect ethnic diversity to accelerate within the PE industry. We will circulate a downloadable version of this presentation by email tomorrow, or alternatively, you can reach out to any of the caller team and we will arrange to send you a copy. The Barometer is a publication of the Collar Research Institute. You can find more information about our reports on the research section of the Collar Capital website. There's also an option to subscribe to our research for future publications. That concludes our presentation. For those of you that have submitted questions, we will follow up shortly. Thank you very much for listening.